Greetings and welcome to episode 184 of the Words About Gamescast, a weekly video game podcast for Words About Games. I'm your host, Amy Alexandra, and I'm joined this week by Parrick Welsh. Hello! 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 Bye! How are you? Okay. Yeah? That's yeah. good. It's good, right? Or is it just okay? Bra, 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 bra. Yo, 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 what's your yo, boy? boy? Patrick. <laughs> Hottest takes like... on the internet. <laughs> They're so hard. This is why like everyone is angry at Toast. <laughs> <laughs> toast is cancelled, you guys. Oh, I like Toast as well. Well. Damn cancelled culture. Yeah, well, it's, it's cancelled now. I guess I can just have it on Toast and uh, fine. Whatever. Whatever. Well, you know, wait till I tell you about bread. Uh, don't, don't ruin bread for me. I like sandwiches. <laughs> I, regret, I regret to tell you that bread said this really homophobic thing. Oh, bread. Why? I suppose I always knew you had it, you had it in you. But still. What? <laughs> Where did that come from? This is the worst thing ever. This is, this is the words. On that note, this is the words about Gamescast, where each week we discuss five stories centered around what's been going on in games, gaming culture, and the games industry over the past seven days. Before we leave you with a list of games that are coming out this week, it's, it's not really a list this week. You'll get that later on. Um, <laughs> this week, we discuss the Game Awards nominations, Google Stadia's gender neutral controllers. The new Half-Life game announcement, the rumours swelling that Resident Evil 3 Remake might be coming next year, and the rumours that Amazon is getting ready to announce its own game streaming service in 2020. And if you're sitting here thinking, well, that sounds like a slow news week, you'd be right. It was a slow news week. Timestamps are in the description below the video over on the YouTube channel, so if you want to watch this video in any particular order you want, if you want to watch the whole thing backwards, if you want to just skip the specific things, you just scroll down and you click the numbers next to the headlines in the, the description and it'll take you where you need to go should we should we should we do the thing yay do the thing let's do it's the gonna thing. be like I, I i predict this podcast is gonna be 50 minutes talking about the first thing and then like yeah. five talking about everything yeah. else <laughs> because yeah it was a slow news week number one the game awards nominations are a bit confusing like i wrote that headline for myself because i was a bit confused when i was going through what, the what confused you um some of the nominations themselves some of the categories okay. um some of the way they've separated out some of the category I'll, I'll get to it okay and then we can discuss it like i always do this every year i don't just bring i don't just go hey these are the nominations let's talk about it i like just disassemble the entire structure how, of the game awards how do you feel about the game awards? but but what does this mean <laughs> <laughs> just you with the red string on the nose yeah, every year without fail but then i just tune in and i watch it and i'm like yeah it was really good <laughs> so you're, you're just like crumpling up things and putting them in a in a chemistry set like jack skellington yeah should we do the? Should we? Should we talk about the the nom, doms, the noms, noms. As called? the noms, the, as I'm calling them? As the kids are calling them because I'm hungry. <laughs> so they're the noms. Oh. Let's start at the top. We've got a game of the year, and I wrote down some of the descript what the descriptions for each of these are, f directly taken from the the mm -hmm. Game Awards website. For reasons later on. Game of the Year is an easy one. Recognizing a game that delivers the absolute best experience across all creative and technical fields. And the nominees are... Now I just feel like I'm hosting the Oscars. Yeah. Control. Death Stranding. <laughs> Resident Evil 2. Sekiro. Shadows Die Twice. Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. And The Outer Worlds. Well, how do you feel about those nominations for Game of the Year? Um... I went through several phases of this. My first, the first phase was sort of, I'm not. There doesn't seem to be like a sort of like standout knockout winner this year, which is kind of strange given how strong the year's been. That there hasn't been like one game I feel like you can sort of point out and say, well, this is the best game ever. Yeah, like you know? it was this one, guys. <laughs> <You know? laughs> 
the yeah, this the second result, and this is obviously very parochial, was where the fuck is Fire Emblem Free Houses? That is going to be Follow- a reoccurring theme throughout this podcast Follow- topic. Followed by, wow, this is a travesty, how dare? And then, you know, it turned out that's basically the conversation. is basically everyone's talking about how their precious anime waifu game, not necessarily Fire Emblem, just in general. Like, someone's got some weird specific, like, why where's isn't... Force? Where's... Code Vein or whatever it was, people are excited are excited about. Um, and then thirdly was me sort of thinking, well, hang on, sort of come about because a lot of the I, we're probably going to get into it. A lot of the discourse became about the perhaps the representation, perhaps over representation of Death Stranding. <laughs> so, and then I sort of so what I did was I sort of went in and sort of actually looked at how how the nominees are selected um and sort of went into it. so so uh, just yes. look at, at the website basically there's 80 outlets yeah and they each outlet selects five nominees in each category which isn't weighted yeah so basically what gets nominated is what gets mentioned the most cuz cuz I'm a I'm a dork who thinks about election systems like is this going to be like an alternate vote is it going to be ranked preferentially and it's not really so it really comes down to the things that get shouted about most are the things that are going to get nominated which probably is the fairest way to do it in many ways probably yeah cuz otherwise cuz otherwise it 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 feels like editorializing so this list and the, the this is for all the nominations is really going to be the things that people brought up most often yeah it's the things that stick in the in the minds yeah. of the people yeah. who, like it's like Eurogamer has thoughts and kind of funny has thoughts and PC yeah. Gamer and Kotaku and etc yeah. etc. There's so many. And outlets the Daily there. Star has thoughts. And the Daily Star has thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> Democracy, right? <laughs> maybe the case coverage is really good. Aren't it? I don't. Maybe it is. The Washington Post just started doing like full on games coverage. They hired um at least for I never remember how to pronounce her surname. At least Favis. Uh, who got was one of the people who got sacked by Game Informer. That's a completely off topic thing. Um yeah. But, but they'll probably, Fire... yeah. They'll yeah. probably be a nominee next year. Probably, yeah. yeah. But it was like, where's Fire Emblem? Is I'm gonna say that a few times. I'm glad you said it first. Um Yeah. So there's no God of War this year. Like where oh, I was just, just going like... back I was going through the like the nominees from last year. Not from last year, like the winners that from the last from since twenty fourteen since the game awards. Um like, God so of War we, was last year. God of War. Breath of the Wild was the year. Breath of the Wild. Was. Was Overwatch. Overwatch. Overwatch, which you know. Twenty fifteen um, wasn't uh, was The Witcher. That makes sense. Twenty fourteen. Twenty fourteen was a threw me for a loop. It was Dragon Age Inquisition. Yes, that was the year that it, Which I love and probably would have been my game of the year, but I'm surprised that that's a no, I, I, don't, I forget what it was up against. It was it that was the year. It was Dragon Age, Inquisition, uh, Middle Earth, Shadow of Mordor. All right, and that was basically it. <laughs> like in terms of like these are the best games of the year. Yeah, twenty fourteen was a bit of a slow. Hang one. on, I'm just going to I'm going to open up Doctor Wikipedia. <laughs> uh, game of the year, Dragon Age Inquisition, Bayonetta two, Dark Souls two, Hearthstone, and Shadow of Mordor. Yeah. yeah. I remember that, yeah. Again, not a strong list. I, it actually, wasn't a strong, not, yeah. Well, it's not that it's a strong list. It's it's that there's no obvious standout. Yeah. So this is the 2014. But yeah. <laughs> weirdly, it's been a much stronger year this year than it, had, than it was in 2014. <laughs> because I feel like there's tons of really awesome games. But yeah, you're right. None of them, like... Especially none of them stand head and, tell, head and tails above the other because it's... At the same, it's it's a it's on the one hand it's quite diverse, on the other hand it's kind of not because it's sort of the usual suspect. Which again, you know, if if you poll, I don't know, five people in the editorial staff, um, and they all mention mention Death Stranding, just as an example, even if that's like their number mm-hmm. five choice, it's going to come up in the nominations the way they're doing it. So it's yeah, there might yeah. be some recency bias. Because Death Stranding, that, and there, are, there almost certainly is. Although, <clears throat> with that said, Resident Evil Two came out in January. Yes, yeah, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate came out last December. I am amazed. But we have just had Halloween. But <clears throat> you're you probably overthinking this. <laughs> I am amazed. Probably, I'm just. I'm, I am amazed that Super Smash Bros. Because Super Smash Bros. Ultimate came out in December last year, so I missed the cutoff 
to mm-hmm. being nominated last time. Yeah. S- for the same reason, there's no Pokemon and no Star Wars in any of these. Yeah. Because both Which games are really good, is, but yeah, it was a conversation people had, but they came out like last week. Yeah, you know, it's like it missed the cutoff point, but it's like Super Smash. Like, I'm amazed people kept that in their minds so much that it got nominated for Game of the Year. Like, even though like, like it. it like over something else that came out this year, like for example, Fire Emblem, just as an example. But mm. like, so like that 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 must have a really dedicated fan <laughs> fan base what, in, the, in what those the, outlets. What the Smash fan base? Yeah, the Smash fan base in yeah. those outlets must be quite strong because the Smash fan base are crazy. Um, in in I, first to Smash, I'm learning that been... a lot of Nintendo fan bases are crazy. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> um... No. Well, that's what happens when you know you're a mega corporation that basically raises a generation of kids, pretty much literally. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the Smash has been very well supported. It's you know had a season path, pass and relatively consistent DLC, and you know Sakurai is well regarded. And you know if I was putting my money tin for half, wonder if people are around me how much they like Smash in reaction to how much they don't like Pokemon. I'm not. Surprise, and I, and I think it definitely deserves to be there. It was probably the thing I played the. It was the thing I played the most that wasn't either Civ Six or Fire. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, yeah, so everyone was playing it in January because everyone got Christmas. Yeah, well, it's like, well, this is the one thing I can sort of. I think, like when I look at these, like Resident Evil Two, everyone was playing that in January. Right, yeah. Smash Brothers, everyone was playing that. The Outer Worlds, like I'm just going off of my my video game twitter yeah. feed discourse it's like the outer worlds everyone was playing it Sekiro, every like yeah like these are the games that were like made the impact on social media like some of them again we talked about it last week like fire and took over twitter for two months because nothing else came out but like even mm-hmm. control like there's a lot of people just talking about it but i feel like that one was a slower burn like every yeah i feel week, like everyone <clears throat> Everyone sort of thinks, well, I really like Control. I thought it was cool, but I don't think it was... It... Like, I kind of, kind of missed the conversation about Control completely. Like, I only got it when it was on sale and I need to finish it. Oh, fair enough. <laughs> I did finish it. It's one of the few games... I've only finished, like, 20 games this month, this year, maybe. So, the more I thought about it, the more I thought, well, actually, I get how this list came about because it's kind of yeah. almost literally produced by committee. Uh, yeah, and I think that the reason we're probably going to get into it. I think the reason why something like Death Stranding, if you look at the review, at the aggregate review scores, it kind of feels like an eh, but it's very polarizing. Like, you know, if forty percent of the people who play it absolutely fucking love it and it's the greatest game of all time, and sixty percent hate it, that's still forty percent where that's their first choice. Yeah, it's you like. Know? That's this is how we end up with bad governments because forty because forty percent really 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 like to this vote for bad people. Person, not to, not to get political. But. No, get your politics out of my games. Uh, no, the um yeah, like it's it's a reason why like Sekiro is on this list or like why a Dark Souls would all, like always get like a really ridiculously high like meta score on Metacritic. Yeah. I mean. They're they're amazing games. Don't get me wrong, but whenever one of the like a game like Sekiro comes out, every single outlet goes, "Okay, let's just give it to such and such." He's like the From Software mega fan. Yeah. <laughs> and then oh look, it's got a ninety two on on Metacritic. How did that happen? But it is a case of like it is a niche game. Um, no, it's not me arguing that it doesn't deserve to be on the list. And and it wasn't for me, but. It, that's how that kind of thing can happen. I feel like, yeah. Um, and you, yeah, you're right. It's just awards, awards by committee. Like, I'm sure my list will. I don't mean that as a pejorative. I know no, it definitely not. Like but that's how it's come about. It wasn't. It wasn't either one. Jeff Keighley, you know, turning over to Hideo Kojima in bed and saying, "You know what? Yeah, I'm going to nominate you for seven awards. <laughs> I'm going to nominate you for everything except the one award that you should definitely be nominated for." We'll get into that bit later. Um, on the other hand, it's also not a curated, like handcrafted. Yeah. You know, Jeff Keighley. These, and... these are the most important games of all time. So. Yeah. No, and like you say, the, stand, the the lack of a standout is quite cool because I look at the list and go, any one of these games could have probably win because again, it's voted on by those same people who are. I don't know. I feel like I'm. I feel like I'm going to be angry when whoever wins. 
I suppose that's why. the flip side of it, right? It's I'm like, well, any of these look games... I say, well, I did deserve to win. <laughs> well, that that's not bad. That's not, yeah. Like, what's your pick? What, what What's your pick? Because I'm not going to ask you what you think, Wayne. I want to know what you, what you want. To win. What would I... I I'll, <clears throat> There's absolutely best of so creative and technical fields. Um, I mean, I kind of feel like I probably should smash him because I played it most, and I haven't played Outer Worlds yet, and I have no interest in Sekiro. So uh, I probably kind of want to give it to Control. That's cool. Control winning will be will be cool. Be a nice cap to the story of the year of everybody just kind of breathlessly anticipating the MPDs and going, it's not on there. It's not right. on there. But it won't game of the year. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think I think I have a different idea of game of the year. It's like when I saw sort of read the description, recognized mm-hmm. game delivers the absolute best experience. Whereas I would think game of the year was recognized a game that had the most sort of impact on the industry. You know? Fair enough. Like it's, it's sort of for me, it's more like time man of the year, which does not necessarily mean it's the best man because it went to fucking Adolf Hitler and Donald Trump. So, but they were important. Yeah. Like the the game of wants is a very different thing from like say my game of the year list or GameSpot's yeah. game of the year list where it's just like these are the games that we like the most in yeah. in twenty nineteen, which which is why it's pointless get sort of getting angry at it because you know it's like if you don't like it go to another outlet that will have a result that's more to your liking. There are hundreds of us somewhere out there on the internet. Someone agrees with you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Let's go to the next one which is independent game mm-hmm. for outstanding creative and technical achievement in a game made outside the traditional, the traditional, I typed that out wrong, the traditional publisher system. And the nominees are Baba Is You, Disco Elysium, Katana Zero, Out of Wilds, and Untitled Goose Game. Honk. Honk. <laughs> yeah, I feel this is a much stronger field because... Yeah. One, I think these are they're all excellent, they all deserve to win, but also there's a there's a standout. It's gonna there's be a the standout. Fucking, it's gonna be the fucking goose game. Oh, okay, cool. I mean That's the goose good. game made a hell of an impact on, on Twitter. Yeah. You have a lot of game juniors on Twitter. Yeah, no, well, this is where I get the thing from. This is what I'm saying when I'm talking about like the game feed, like game journals, game developers. I've got a list on of like a bunch of people on Twitter. So I can literally if I'm ever getting oh, your sick revenge of, list. If I can ever, if I ever get sick of the discourse on Twitter, like I can literally just flick over to game stuffs, which is in my Twitter list <laughs> of like six hundred people, and it's just it's just games people. And yeah, they don't always talk about games, but you know, it's just, but like yeah, I mean these are all fantastic games. Um, I, I've played them all at some point in the year. I've only played Katana Zero actually. <laughs> Outer Wilds seemed like a game I really wanted to like, but. I, couldn't get away with it because of the way the controls worked so i kind of couldn't get into it but at the same time i was like i really I think out like to probably sweep a whole bunch of other categories i don't so i like i don't know i, I don't know where we left off when we had that minor technical <laughs> kerfuffle but um, sorry that's fine the inter- it happens it happens no no big deal but you said the untitled goose game was the one that, to me, the one that jumps out is Disco Elysium, because I feel like all of the games are really good, but for me, that one is like really, really good. Like, it sticks its head yeah. up above the pack. That's a personal. I, I want to play it. I, I really, really, really want to play it. I'm not seeing a lot of people talking. Like, I think, like, <laughs> I think the Goose Game has sort of like reached out of the sort of hardcore gamer journalist mindset into a broader culture i don't know if that's necessarily going to help it well but... it's a lot simpler and i don't mean that as like taking a dig i don't mean no that no no at, at all at, at, at untitled goose game but um it is like you're a goose you're a goose like that's the the, the premise and <laughs> You are a horrible goose. You are a horrible goose. Shit. You is a goose. <laughs> like, go fuck shit up. And then, like, you've got Disco Elysium, which is, like, super complicated, like, yeah. RPG with, like, it's you have a... conversations with your skill checks. and. <laughs> it's a very video game video. Yeah. That's what you said. It's a very video gamey video game. Yes. This is a cursed conversation, apparently. Um, yeah. So, <laughs> so yeah, so the. All the games on this list are really good. Um, the Outer Wilds, 
I couldn't really get into it because of the way it controls. Like, I wanted to like it because it seems like exactly my kind of game. But I couldn't. Um, Katana Zero was just really fun. <laughs> mm. um, and Baba is You is a really, really fun puzzle game, which is super hard. It's one of those kind of puzzle games where yeah. it's like, it's super difficult until it's not, like, until you go, oh, that's the solution. That was really simple. <laughs> I just need to turn the trees into a wall or something. Something like that. Um, let's move on to the next category. Like, Yay. this is where I start to get ask questions of, of the nature of, of the categories of the Game Awards. So this, yeah. is, this is action game. For the best game in the action genre, focused primarily on combat. Uh, the nominees here are Apex Legends, Astral Chain, Call of Duty Modern Warfare, Devil May Cry 5, Gears 5, and Metro Exodus. <laughs> yeah, there's like three genres there. Yeah. So then the next category, we'll do, we'll, I want to have a conversation around these two categories at once. The next category is action slash adventure game. Mm-hmm. For the best action slash adventure game, combining combat with traversal and puzzle solving. And then the nominees there are Borderlands 3, Control, Death Stranding, Resident Evil 2, Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening, and Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. Now, wh- what's the, what, what makes an action game an action game? And what makes an action adventure game an action adventure game? Because even the the descriptive text doesn't really help me in this regard. Like figure out like why is one one thing? Why is Sekiro in one thing and not the other thing? Why is Metro Exodus in one thing and not the other thing? Like it confuses me. Help. Um I mean it's got a little bit of, you know, the definition of pornography <clears throat> is I know it when I see it to it. <laughs> <laughs> and when once you start getting <laughs> grinding down her into the details, it's sort of the whole thing falls. But it's almost like genres are meaningless. But whatever. Um, I think when action game, they mean this is sort of like twitchy combat focused, very technical. And with action adventure, they mean this has got a plot and puzzle solving elements and traversal. Yeah, it's more of an adventure without it's saying adventure, adventure game because that implies a whole third of a genre, which is like old <laughs> LucasArts games. Because genres are stupid. Because um, genres are stupid. Like yeah. it, I would, I mean, best action adventure game might as well just say best triple A video game. Best, really. best, yeah. I, it's I, I, just sort of like the default sort of open worldish kind of you know third person actiony genre that we sort of everything defaults to. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Like, yeah. Of those two one. genres, which which would you put God of War, for example? I mean, it's I difficult, know. right? It's like, it's definitely action focused, but, yeah. you know, you, you traverse a world, much like it mentions in the action adventure game genre, but then also you do that in Metro Exodus, which was nominated for best action game. And, yeah, when you start looking at it and you start actually thinking about it, I look, this is one of the things where I was like, this is really confusing. and I, Because I think about these things too much, Patrick. Yeah. And when I do that, my, the, the wiring in my brain short circuits. <laughs> and when, you say, when you say action game, I think a lot of people think it to mean like the big spectacle action games like Devil May Cry and Astral Chain. And Metro Mar- Mar- Exodus. No, not like I mean, a little more like a sort of a bayonetta thing. Like a foot. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm saying is, I haven't, played, I haven't played Metro Exodus, and therefore can't judge you. the people. The people who voted on these things did did a silly. I think. Yeah. Um, well, again, the action game is so nondescript because it's 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 a bit tautological because. Action game for the best game in the action genre, focused primarily on combat. So the definition of the action game is there's is the action, action game. Yeah. Well, it's like so, best action adventure game for the best yeah. action adventure game. It's like, well, yeah, I fucking I figured, right? <laughs> like, I, well, action adventure gives it a qualifier in that sort of. That's sort of where people throw <laughs> Zelda and people think, ah, well, I know Zelda, so it's things that are kind of Zelda. <laughs> like Borderlands Three. <laughs> yeah, sure. 
I feel like someone I, I just got a, a bunch of games, these two categories, and just like shuffled. Like I don't know yeah. why I said shuffled while I'm making the juggling motion, but yeah, they kind of just shuffled them up and went, "Yeah, that can be in the action game genre. That can be in the action adventure game genre." So on, so forth. I think there is a distinction to be made. I'm thinking like, well, what? How do you solve this? Do you like spin first person shooters off into their own genre? But then where do you put third person shooters? And I think there's value in having a distinction between a, a game that is primarily focused on combat yes. and one that has other aspects to it. Now this sort of runs the problem as well because it's it's selected by an audience based on you know these descriptors. Like how do you narrow them out? Like do you just like ex- like you know if I don't, if I don't know if AD Outlet had all nominated Fire Emblem, say would we be talking about that being the best action? <laughs> I mean, or, we'll be talking or, about Yeah, you know, or is there stuff that has been excluded on the grounds of genre? I don't know. Uh, it's weird. Like, I don't <laughs> know whether I don't know where the line is. Like, if, if an outlet puts something in in the nomination, does Jeff get on the phone and be like, "Listen, that's not an action game. You, you gotta take that out." Like, I don't know. I don't know. You probably this didn't is get on probably the, phone the longest no conversation one. anyone's had about this. Genre, <laughs> just it. genre distinctions don't matter. But when you bring it up, <laughs> when 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 the other person brings it up, it's like, okay, well, you're trying to make this distinction, and I'm trying to come along for the ride with you. <laughs> Astral Chain and Devil May Cry 5, sure, I get behind that. Action games, sure. Apex and COD. Yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah. Gears. And, and Gears. Yeah, all right, fair enough. Yeah, okay. Metro. No. <laughs> well, yeah, Probably it's like not. when you see, realize Metro's in, but... Sekiro isn't. Yeah, and then and Sekiro's on the other one. It's like, huh? Yeah, then it's like, okay, we just swap those around, and then it's like, oh, Resident Evil Two because there's no horror category, so we got to get that in somewhere. So we just put it in the action adventure game. It's definitely not an action focus game. Um, De- Death Strand, sure, yep, Death Stranding. That was both I, action. I don't know where else to put Death Stranding. I don't. Yeah, it's like. Action adventures, you, you look at some of them and it's like, well, where else do you put it? Like, yeah, okay. Yeah, we'll have it's, a... it's like, it's it's sort of what, what genre, what genre is, I don't know, Horizon Zero Dawn? It's it's just sort of the default yeah. AAA video game genre. It is that's the, where we yeah. Put. What, what genre is Red Dead Redemption? Open world. We could be that a genre. <laughs> yeah, but every game is open world. Yeah, no. <laughs> so annoying sometimes as well it just didn't it's like when you play a game and you go this didn't need to be an open world why is this an open world no. um best at like fuck it let's just get to the like right we broke the the the, the We've broke the genres down. We still don't understand their meaning. People are probably going to get mad at us for nitpicking. So what's your <laughs> uh, No, I think it's um... oh. distinction. Yeah. I mean, it's, yeah. it's it's fine. It's fine. We it's just can't fine. figure out what the distinction is yeah. based on the games that are in, in in each list. Um, cool. What's your pick for best action game? I realize I didn't ask you this about the previous one. Um, well, it, it, the last one was indie game, and I said goose game, so it's fine. Um, action game. I realize I haven't actually played any of these. <laughs> okay, fair enough. <laughs> um, so I don't, so I don't know. So I can't really say which one deserves it. So I, f- I don't know. I think it's going to go to Apex Legends. Yeah. I think it probably should go to Apex Legends because I think, again, I think that's probably the most significant. Yeah, that kind of that. When you talk about impact, that was like you yeah. know, asteroid hits the Earth in terms of yeah. like impact. <laughs> asteroid hits Bioware. <laughs> asteroid hits Bioware. Yeah, Square in the office. No anthem on any of these lists. Weird. Um, mm. Action... Mm. So weird. <laughs> so strange. Action adventure game. And that would probably be this would probably be the one I would give to Death Stranding. Actually. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. If it doesn't get the overall game of the year, because game of the year, because of the way it's all voted on, it has a weird thing of like. This is a good run. Death Stranding would win, like, for example, Death Stranding would win Action Adventure Game, whereas Resident Evil 2 would win Game of the Year, even though they're nominated in the same categories because they like to spread out the awards. Mm. 
I don't know how they all collectively do that without... <laughs> but somehow they manage it every time. That's why Red Dead Redemption 2 won the best action-adventure game, but God of War won game of the year. Like, let's yeah. move on. Role-playing game. For the best game designed with rich player character customization and progression, including massively multiplayer experiences. Um, well, that's dumb. Yeah. Because that's right. single player and, and MMOs. So. MMOs get jumped into that, even though there is a best multiplayer game category as well. Yeah. So, Final Fantasy XIV. How, how was Final Fantasy XIV nominated? Did it have an expansion this it year? It did. It was called yeah. Shadowbringers, I think. And it was the one where Tom Holland was training to be a to be a shadow bringer in the advert. The nominees are Disco Elysium, Final Fantasy XIV, Kingdom Hearts 3, Monster Hunter Iceborne, Iceborne. World Iceborne. So we're allowing DLC now. Yes. And The Outer Worlds. Okay. So one of those is definitely an action adventure game. <laughs> like, I, I mean, I don't class Monster Hunter World as a fantastic game for sure, but I don't class it as an RPG. Um,. Where's Fire Emblem? Would be my second question. Well, it's in strategy game. I, I know. Why? <laughs> but yeah, it's it's a it's a, a turn based strategy game, and it's RP, it's, it's a strategy RPG. RPG. It's, we, it should be. We yeah. solved this twenty years ago when Chrono Trigger came out. It's a strategy RPG. <laughs> like we solved the description of how it described these types of games. Um, and yeah, Kingdom Hearts three, I guess people remember that existed it's hard because i don't remember a lot of rpgs coming out this year <laughs> well well yeah um neither do i now think about it yeah because now that i think I about think, it well, i think if yeah if king hearts 3 was not nominated there would be so much of a fuss do you think because i feel like that game kind of just disappeared without trace well yeah i'm not I'm, i don't think it's going to win at all i think it deserves to but i think kingdom hearts fans are insane they are insane. <laughs> it's true. Um, I've seen some of them talk about. Sorry, them. that was that. That's not fair. It's it's. it's they were driven it's insane by they the would... franchise that they chose to love, and it's twenty-seven games. Yeah, <laughs> spread and across the, thirty-three platforms, and and the ridiculous time it took to come out. So I think it's fair and above board, especially if there's not that many other other options. That Kingdom Hearts Three is nominated. It yeah. won't win, and if it does, no. I will. Run. Um, I think, think Outer Worlds all in. Yeah, this is a this is a, a two horse race between Disco Elysium and the Outer Worlds, and I think it's going to take it. Yeah, I think Outer Worlds will win this one. Like it's nominated so many times, which is weird because I was like, this is awesome and I really love it, but I didn't expect, I didn't expect it to get so much traction. Like again, I wonder if a lot of this is reaction against Fallout. Maybe. Again, this is tin full hat. So, you know. Tin full hat time. Well, Fallout seventy six, which was also not nominated for anything last year. Mm. No, nor should it be. Good. Um, so yeah, strategy game, best game focused on real time or turn based strategy gameplay, irrespective of platform. Which is a weird little thing to add at the end of that because it's not on any of the other ones, but <laughs> apparently it is on on this one. It is. It's. Uh, I noticed it was on um, Family Game because all the all the nominations which, are mine. Yeah. <laughs> All the nominations come from the same place. Um, yeah, so this was Age of Wonders, Planet Fall, Anno 1800, Fire Emblem, Three Houses, Three Total War, Three Kingdoms, Tropical Six, Morgrove. And one of those games on this list is not like any of the others. <laughs> and that is Fire Emblem. Well, it's iconic. Actually, Wargroove is too. Wargroove. I think this is a really strong list. It is. I think, I think uh, Planet Fall, Wargroove, and Three and Three Kingdoms would all be like really strong options if it was, in fact, Three houses is absolutely going to steal it. Actually. Oh, one hundred percent! Like it's in the it's for me personally, it's in the wrong category, <laughs> but it, it probably yeah, is going to win this. This category. is the only category it's in, and I think it sh I think it should be in more. And I'm very aware that I just sound like the guy who Im imports, you know, bullet bullet hell panty shooters <laughs> from Japan, and is complaining that they're not being non nominated by the industry but this is really good fire emblem and everyone really liked it i know it should be in game of the year like it just should be like it, it should, should be in the nominations like it should probably be in role-playing games well. and it should be in role-playing games like put it in <sighs> in the correct place but yeah wargroove was cool um and that's the only one of the other ones that i played i played wargroove on my switch um, final four looked really good because it looks a lot like Sid. And the Total War games are always very competent once they've been patched. 
yeah, like I had plans to play like Age of Wonders and and Tropical, but it was one of those things where it was like I'd never got round to it. Yeah. Like strategy game is that is that genre for me personally, where it's like that's the one that drops off. Like if there's like a lot of games coming out, I'm like right, I can't can't play all of these. Like a strategy game will be the first one to just where I'll just sort of go. Sorry, I really one. like. I really like strategy games, and they're the thing that makes it suck that I use a Mac because um, I kind of <laughs> miss them. Um, but usually, there's like a clear runaway winner, and this is a really strong, um, a bunch of contenders that unfortunately have all come out in the wrong year if they get this award. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Truth, preach. <laughs> I mean, it's an argument made that Fire Emblem should be here because it's. Barely, a that's strategy. the argument. But Free Houses is barely a strategy game at this point. Like for, <laughs> for me, that is the argument. Like it, it's, it's mostly not a life simulator. It's gonna win the award, which is cool because it's gonna win a game a game awards award. But it's also like it should have won the other one. <laughs> um, the People RPG were one. unhappy by how little strategy was in. I know, like that, I remember that discourse. People were like, the strategy in this game is not great, but the RPG stuff's awesome. It's like. That's- the strategy's fine, it just takes a lot longer to get it does usually in Fire Emblem, which usually consists of two static shots, you know, of characters yelling at each other. Yeah. Like any good JRPG. Let's go the title, the the award whose name made me yeah. laugh out loud. Yeah. The fresh just... indie game presented by Subway. <laughs> <laughs> so i've been watching community recently and it's like it's from that age of television where everything that was like on the verge of getting cancelled was sponsored by subway and really creative and inventive ways and then i saw this like presented by subway and i was just remembering all of the weird subway like product integrations from like sitcoms in the the early 2010s um and then, yeah, I, I just I burst out laughing. This award is for recognizing a new independent studio that released its first game in 2019. Uh, and the, the nominees are Z, 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 Zaum, ZA slash UM for Disco Elysium, Nomada Studio for Gree, Dead Toast Entertainment for my, my friend Pedro, Morbius Digital for The Outer Wilds, Mega Crit for Slay the Spire, and House House for Untitled Goose Game. Patrick might be looking at this list and going, oh, that's weird, some of the the entries on this list have been put in italics by me. And I th- that's because the ones that are in italics, ha- the, the, these aren't the first games that they've released. Ah. <laughs> like, so I don't understand. So and where's Jeff Keighley disqualifying I, them? I... I did a Google search on every single studio on this list, and like the other studios might have released games too, but I only checked for like two minutes. But at the same time, I only checked for two minutes and found half of the nominees had released games before the games that they released in 2019. Good job, Game Awards. <laughs> like, because I'm pretty sure there used to be a category for best breakthrough, like something like that. It was like a breakthrough game, which all of these games are. Yeah, yeah sure. Like, Untitled Goose Game is 100% a breakout game. Out of Wilds, My Friend Pedro, they're all breakout games. But it's like they changed the name of it, but then no one's, no one who's nominating games seems to have gotten the message that they changed the name of it. So, like... Well, you know, I think they wanted to call it the fresh indie game presented because it's presented by Subway. Yeah, so they fucked up. And then, unfortunately, <laughs> the description is recognizing new independent studio that released its first game in, 19, in 2019. So, yeah. Yeah, wrong. Sorry. Fact Maybe they only the changed it recently. Maybe. Like, I'd hope they'd changed it. Yeah. Like, I hope they haven't changed it, like, after everybody's already voted. But it's just one of those things where it's like, this is stupid. Like, my, like the game wants, like, striving for legitimacy. Like, this doesn't help. <laughs> like, <laughs> when you can point at a award and go, that's factually incorrect. Especially if one of them wins. <laughs> like, if Mobius Digital, like, wins the award for... for fresh indie game presented by subway and i really hope the trophy is like a subway sandwich um like for the outer wilds and then it's like well people are, well that wasn't their first game They're like what what the hell subway i'm gonna blame you subway it, it seems unlikely that someone's gonna win this and best indie game yeah probably i not. would hope. again i'm assuming it's political and not you know <laughs> 
again, it's like, I feel like people who vote for this, if they vote for, say, Untitled Goose Game in Best Indie Game, they'll vote for something different in Best, in Fresh Indie Game. Like, yeah. Like, because I feel like that's just the way it goes. Like, that's how we end up with, like, a really diverse group of winners instead of just mm-hmm. God of War winning is- all the awards last year. Mm-hmm. Like... Cause, Which is what you want, really? Oh, 100 percent. Because you want to like celebrate as many as many different games as you want. Like I, when we do E3 or when we do Game of the Year, like I, I do awards, but like some of them are, are like are really like not serious at all. Like some of them are like really like strangely named and stuff. And it's just because I'm not trying to be like this was the definitive best game of X. Then this was the defi-. it's because I'm like I want to talk about as many different things as possible. That was awesome. Um. Because yeah, otherwise you just end up stuck on repeat talking about God of how great God of War was or how great Overwatch was. Like Games for Impact is the next one. Uh, sorry, which which one do you think is gonna win? Fresh indie game. Fresh indie game. A um, I don't know. I think it might go to either Disco Elysium or Gree. Yeah, I think this. This would be a good console opening in indie game. <laughs> yeah, yeah um, I mean, and I'm, ho- and I'm hoping someone will, someone will notice that they're that they're, that they're from studios that that yeah you know, that didn't that didn't release things before 2019. Yeah, I mean, hopefully enough people notice. Like, oh, these are actually fresh indie games. Um, cool. Yeah, I like. I mean, I love Disco Elysium. I, I like all of these games. Uh, apart from Outer Wilds. My friend Pedro I wasn't too keen on, but I could see any one of them winning the Subway yeah. Sandwich Trophy. Yeah. Um, but let's move on to Games for Impact. By the way, we're like, we're so far, like, we're not right. So, I'm telling you the plan now. <laughs> we're just going to do this one thing about the Game Awards, like, for this podcast. And we'll just reshoot the intro at the begin- at the end of the podcast. Because, uh, Right. I'm looking at the time and I'm looking at the list. I'm like, I want to keep going with this and I don't want to rush it. So we're just going to do a Game Awards podcast. Nice. Which will make no sense to anyone who's just started, who's watched the podcast because we're going to reshoot the It's a whole thing. Don't worry about it. Anyway, Games for Impact. You'll just cut this part out. Maybe. I'll forget. For, oh, very <laughs> for a thought provoking game with a pro social meaning or message. And the nominees are Concrete Genie, Gree, Kind Words, Life is Strange 2, and Sea of Solitude. Now, this is the one category I think, like, like there are other categories Death Stranding's nominated in where I'm like, why? And we'll get to that in a bit. This is the category I feel like Death Stranding should be in and isn't. Because it does the whole, hey, everybody should help each other and build each other up and connecting the world. And But then it's like, the, what, what do you think of the the description of like what g- games for impact actually means? I f- think what it means is that the they're talking about the games that are specifically and overtly and deliberately dealing with issues or themes that don't generally get handled and doing it in a constructive way. It's so, so it's a like bringing up things, LGBT issues, the experience of women, uh, the experience of F, of ethnic minorities. Basically, you know, the, the games that are not only not white dude bro shooters, but are deliberately counter to it, and have actually got something to say. I'm, I'm not phrasing this right. No, I mean all of these games do have something, something <laughs> yeah. to say, like on this list for sure. I haven't actually played any of the things on this on this list, but I did play the first. Life is strange, which so yeah, which, to have a yeah. sense, I think, for what what sort of thing that they're going for. Yeah, I mean, like, Sea of Solitude uh, was about depression. Concrete Genie was strange. about bullying. Yeah. Life is strange too. Was just, I haven't actually played that. Um, I can imagine what it's about having played the. But uh, I, yeah, life. I can imagine it tackles like themes, <laughs> like <laughs> don't run out hope- here going, oh, games aren't political. Yeah, I, well, I yeah, I think that I, I think it's just like dead parents and the experience of loss and grief and yeah, 
Yeah, I did play the. Sorry, you saying dismiss- dismissive. I haven't played Life is Strange two, and I really shouldn't want to because the first one, the first one made me feel things. Yeah, it, it made me feel things. It made everybody feel things. To quote Brooklyn Nine Nine, um, and Gree was about the mental five health. stages. Yeah, mental illness and the five stages of of grief. Um, it really hammers over your head when you get towards the end of that game. Kind words is cool. Like, I want this one. I want this one to win the games for Impact because no one's ever heard of it, <laughs> which I know is, is dumb. A dumb reason for it to want to win a, an award, but it's like this teeny little game where, like, you send notes to other people. Like, that's all you do. You just, it puts on, like, some, like, chilled out lo fi music and, and you just send notes to people and you get notes from other people. And, like, you can just write whatever into the, into the, the ether. So, like, you know, if you're struggling, you can write, like, oh, I'm having a, a hard time. Or, like, you might get something and you can write to to someone about it. It's, like, it's just, like, a way of, of communicating, which hasn't been co-opted by the shitheads. Um, yeah. <laughs> which is which is cool, man. Like, I love it. Like, as a concept of of a game, like, yeah, cool. Like, that that will be the one I... And, ironically, it's, it's the one on the list, apart from Life is Strange, that I haven't played, but... Like, even just hearing about what it is and seeing what it is, it's like, yeah, I, I want that one to be my... I would want that one to be the Games for Impact game. As as cool as, like, Concrete Genie is at dealing with bullying and Gree is at dealing with state, like grief and... Sea of Solitude was a really cool, if a bit heavy-handed, um, thing about dealing with depression. It's like, yeah, like, cool. Like, Kind Words wants to make more of an impact by sort of like being more proactive about it rather than just showing you the story and going this is a thing and it sucks and this is a thing people deal with which is still really important like i don't think enough games do that kind of thing but mm-hmm. that's my take on on these on these nominations i kind of just kept talking in there <laughs> yeah no it's, i have having not played them i i i don't really have anything to say and that's fair enough. Have, have feelings need to express them. So, um, that's, that's fair. Should we just jump to the next? I think one? I think they're they decent. It's it's a decent lineup. I suppose the only thing I would probably prefer it was something of Don't Not, whom I love, but I think that they sort of cornered the market on this the last few nights for someone else to have a turn. Because I think it's a good way to promote something. Yeah, I mean, winning a game award is a good way to get people to. To like to pay attention, right? Sometimes, because you can say, "Well, it's an award-winning game." That's what everybody says. Uh, anyway, narrative for outstanding storytelling and narrative development in a game. A Plague Tale: Innocence, Control, <laughs> Death Stranding, <laughs> Disco Elysium, and The Outer Worlds. <laughs> Why are you laughing at Death Stranding? Because I've played 25 hours of Death Stranding and it's the... You don't think it has outstanding storytelling and narrative development? I think it's the... I think it's a practical... Like, it's writing feels like a practical joke. Like... You haven't played Metal Gear Solid 2. That is a practical joke. I'm not like I'm not going to go massively into why I think Death Stranding is dumb as shit because I, I, I vaguely remember us having this in conversation for like ten minutes last week. Um, <laughs> I haven't played it. I cannot comment. But other it's... than I have played Kojima games, and I understand. You know, I think feeling like you're pranked is kind of part of the experience. It's yeah, it's dumb as fuck. Like uh, no, it is not one of the best narratives of 2019. And how did you? 80 I'm speaking directly to the 80 outlets at this point. How did you not find a different game to nominate in this category? Come on. put a plague on. tale in. No, I mean just that one game. Like the other four, fine. I love the I love the fact that the other four are, are in there. They're like they're all really 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 solid and solidly well written, but no. You could have thought of something else to put in here other than death fucking stranding. I'm sorry. See, I I don't know. I kind of feel like this would be if if they gave this award to Death Stranding and it won nothing I'm going else, to I'd burn the internet to the ground. Probably be okay with. <laughs> <laughs> like, I will. I'll burn Twitter down if the if Death Stranding wins Best Narrative at the Game Awards. It, it can't possibly because I think this is one area where being divisive. But yeah, like every other game on this list has such better writing, like. 
like even the control which i would say would be like the outsider like just removing death stranding from the equation I, all, I, like, I all thought, together i thought play control would have been the forerunner personally but I've, i mean i really love controls i absolutely adore control like in every in every conceivable way and like i'm glad it's on this nomination list but like i look at the writing of disco elysium and a plague tale innocence and i think that those like a plague tale innocence just i think it probably had a stronger do narrative. i need to play do, do you need to play a plague tale yeah definitely it's an awesome game i mean it's depressing as fuck but it's really mm. awesome um and like disco elysium's writing is just insanely like i was gonna say insanely quality that's not a sentence that makes grammatical sense it is really fucking good it, it does in geordie but otherwise no yeah it, it is yeah it is just like incredible like incredibly well written and even the Outer Worlds is like a really, really solidly written RPG with some really cool characters. Uh, the main story is just basically fuck capitalism and yeet the rich into the sun, but, yep. you know. Cool. Those themes exactly. work. Those themes vibe with me. <laughs> Someone's got to be saying. But I feel like, I don't know, I feel like this might be the, the category that Disco Elysium wins. I feel like it's starting right. to win one award, and I feel like this one. It's been be nominated it. for a lot. It has been nominated for a lot. It's punching above its weight, I think, a bit. I don't know. I think it's a really. It's one of the best rated games of the year. Um, I, haven't, I haven't played it because it's not on a console yet, and I. Uh, it is it. just on PC. Um, I don't know how you make it work on it. It is one of those RPGs. It's coming. It's, was... coming. it's coming next year. Um, but uh, it's no, like I a like... nice ice. Isometric RPG and um, if you can put Baldur's Gate on a console, I think you. Yeah, that is true. It's like I'm just I've just got Open Critic up, and here it is. It is literally the second highest rated game on Open Critic for 2019. Um, the like it's got a 91. Resident Evil 2 is is the the front runner. It's got a 92, and then Sekiro's in third with 90. But um, it like it's writing. Like if you said to me, you could only. It can only win one of the categories it's nominated for. I'd, I'd say that the writing is probably the best, the category I give it to. Not taking anything away from the other games except Death Stranding, but like it. Ooh, Ooh I'm salty. Just... I'm salty about. I'm just salty about it. I'm, I just am. You sound like my mum watching Strictly Come Dance. Listen, just wait until we. Oh, I hate you so much. Just wait until we start talking about music and graphics, but um. Yeah, like, I mean, Control had a great story. Plague Tale Innocence had a story that will scar me forever. Like, but I feel like it's the two indies for me that, like, have the strongest narratives. Or should I say, the most outstanding creative and or tech... Nope, that's the other one. The most outstanding storytelling and narrative development in a game. I'm glad they added that qualifier at the end. In a game. I don't know. I'm feeling this is... This is the one Death Stranding's. Well, I hope not, because I'll burn Twitter <laughs> down. I don't. I, I don't agree with it. Like out of all those, I've the only one I've actually played. Is... Yeah. I really want to play the Outer Worlds, and I really want Disco Elysium to come to a platform I can play it. It will, and then you'll you'll be you'll be in all. I think I think you'll love it. I think any of those are, would be a worthy winner with. Death Stranding, admittedly, being an an, out, an ultra choice for me. Yes. Well, can't will... comment. Haven't played it. Can't comment. Haven't played it. Like you just got this get out of jail free card, where it's like <laughs> I have played all of these. Oh no. Um. Oh. Well, no. I can comment on its art direction. Art direction for outstanding creative and or technical achievement in artistic design and animation. The nominees are Control, Death Stranding, Gree. Sayonara Wild Hearts, Sekiro Shadows Die Twice, and The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening. Is Comment on the art Link's direction. Is this the only one Link's Awakening's been known? No, it's in something else as well. Yeah. Action Adventure Game. New Senki Remake and Chibi Nomine. <laughs> well, I mean, Resident Evil 2 is everywhere, but like... Yeah. Like, I mean, there is that conversation to be had where it's like, how, like for me, a remake, a full-on... Like remake, like Resident Evil Two, and like Link's Awakening, like yeah, yeah nominated. Yeah, it's, it's basically a new yeah, game. It's, been made, it's not a port. It's been re remade from scratch. Yeah, 100%. especially in something like art, in something like Art Direction. 
Uh, I mean, for me, I think this is a straightforward two horse race between control and greed. Like, I think those are the two that deserve it most. Death Stranding, I think it has strong art direction, but I kind of hate it. <sighs> um. I mean, it looks very Sorry? pretty. Like the yeah. go, it's good. Like the landscapes are gorgeous to look at, but it's basically it's, Norway. <laughs> like, it's got like the cool, you know, mechanical designs which Kojima always brings. The animations are are pretty bad though. Like, and like like just from just playing the game, it's like climbing stuff. It's like constantly like. You remember the. You remember Mass Effect Andromeda when that came out, and there was a bunch mm-hmm. of meme videos and gifs circling the internet. Yeah, and there was that one where the the animation broke, and it was like she was like crunched down and the weird legs throat, went, the weird fate. like run. Like right. Norman Reedus does that in in this game when you like because if you hold down the X button while you're you're moving, like you just automatically like climb rocks and stuff, and like Norman Reedus' character sometimes does that on purpose, like the thing that was broken in Mass Effect and. And like was mocked, and then Death Stranding and every, gets fired. And everyone complained about it. Yeah, I don't, I don't get why people are so salty on it. It's like it it got patched. Yeah, it did. Yeah. I I assume I didn't play. I I actually stuck with it at launch. It wasn't that that bad. I mean, it was bad. Like it wasn't technically. It, didn't, it certainly didn't cripple the game for. Them. No, I mean, I just I played it all like all the way through. Like there were yeah, moments I've, where it was like, what the fuck. But, yeah, I mean, I mean, yeah, geez, we probably have a whole conversation about Mass Effect Andromeda. I really sure. like, Ma- I really like Mass Effect Andromeda. There's just something about it that is as as good as the original, and I probably have a conversation about why that is. But I think it's technical. I think ragging on its technical always struck me as very unfair. Yeah, too true. We'll have that conversation one day. But, um, yeah, like Sekiro is another one where I'm like, why is this nominated here? I don't get why that's nominated. Because it's not nothing to nothing about its art direction stands out yeah. to me. Like no. if it Dark Souls and Bloodborne, yes, they're hundred percent very sty- very stylized. Sekiro is very kind of generic Japanese ness. It's, yeah. it's yeah. just straightforward, you know art design. Like it doesn't really stand out to like me. Like if I said to you really... check out you should check out this game, it's a s it's a game about a samurai set in feudal Japan and you pictured it, you'd probably be picturing would... something pretty close to what Sekiro looks yeah. like. But on the other hand, I'm also thinking of Ghost of Tsushima, which cool looks. But yeah, like Ghost of Tsushima is really stylized, and like yeah. I remember the E3 um, uh, kind of gameplay trailer where they were having the sword fight in the field with the yeah. with the, the, the what do you call them, the cherry blossoms blowing around and stuff, and it's like that like that was really evocative, and I feel like yeah. Sekiro isn't <laughs> in, yeah. in any way. Or, or Okami, which yeah. Um, Which like, is a similar sort of yeah source material, I suppose. True. Like there is a there is like a undercurrent of like a subgenre which is just samurai. Because <laughs> uh, Neo Two again is is a is a, in a similar situation or Neo I should say. Um, I mean the other games on this list are I've got like Sayonara Wild Hearts looks so good, <laughs> like. I remember playing that on my PS4. Like it, it, it looks like so. It's like neon and trippy and <clears throat> very pink. I'm, I'm remembering it was very, very pink. Yeah, I had to just Google it. That was <laughs> a really awesome rhythm action game with an amazing soundtrack, which we'll get to talking about, I think, later. Um, like Gree looks fantastic. Like the animation. I think it's hand, hand, hand drawn. Uh, don't quote me on that it came out a year ago it's good enough that it got ripped off by app developers that is true um control like i love the world of the the what's it called the oldest house yes yeah i love that world but like for me it's the it's the physicality of the world and like why i think i'm happy it's nominated here it's like little things like when you you know when you're like picking stuff up with your psychic powers like Mm -hmm. and there's nothing around to pick up you just rip a chunk out of the the floor and i it the like the the destruction physics in the game um like really sell it like you have a firefight in an office and shit's just exploding all over the place off the tables it's like yeah that that 
I, that gets me. And Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening just looks really cute. It's really cute. It's yeah. gorgeous. Yeah. It's very pretty. Um, so, like, any one of those four, like, I just said, I'd be fine with uh, with any of those four women. Yeah. I, no, I, I agree. Yeah. I don't really know where it's going to, like, which way it's going to lean in that one, in that regard, because they're very different. Not even just different art styles. They're very different. Like, they're all here for very different reasons. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I kind of think for that. If this is going to go to Link's really anything else that it's gonna get and it's beloved enough by enough people that you know because control and death i think people are, might think control death stranding and to a certain degree is probably gonna win something i don't know Maybe control's gonna win something it's been nominated like eight times so or seven seven or eight times so yeah this is another one where i want to read the two nominees in fact i don't need to so there's two awards that we're going to talk about next for be- community support and best ongoing game. Mm-hmm. Um, community support is for recognizing a game for outstanding oh, right. community support. <laughs> you just I figured just it out. That. Transparency yes, and responsiveness. An ongoing game is awarded to a game for outstanding development of ongoing content that evolves the player experience over time. And the nominees for both categories are Apex Legends, Destiny 2, Final Fantasy XIV, Fortnite, and Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Siege. So what is fundamentally the difference between these two awards, and why are there two separate awards? Because Well, I guess what they're saying is that the award for ongoing game is for the game itself, like the experience that it's had this year. Whereas community support is more about how the back of house team has sort of it i almost want to say community management yeah okay like just yeah. for me when you've nominated the same games in both categories that throws up a flag which says to me like maybe this this category isn't so different from the other one but like if i've got a category for the best on ongoing game like community support to me like for a game like any of these five is such a huge part of that game's appeal like my if overwatch had shitty community management i'd stop playing it and weirdly enough i I did and it and it does um (laughs) but (laughs) i just blew up my own point um wow the salt I just supported my own point by blowing it up, but you, yeah, you get you get where I'm going. It's like I feel like those two things are just one and the same. Like I can see a, a distinct. I think the fact that they're thrown at the same list. Is, I mean, it might well be the fact that they're, they're thrown together and that people had they're kind of awards by default to sort of games as service platforms, and that's always going to throw up the same kind of. It's like everybody just went and filled in one list, and then just went, oh well went into it with the same mindset of like the second oh best community support well the same games right just copy and paste copy and paste yeah um i don't know fortnite is probably gonna win something <laughs> it probably has to like i feel like if it doesn't it's a bit disingenuous um considering they had everybody staring at live streams of nothing for like two days earlier yeah. this year i think apex legends deserve i think apex legends would i think be... siege probably deserves a community support yeah, so, I was going to say, that's... like, I feel like Fortnite's going to win the best ongoing game. And that's like, well, Apex Legends might deserve to win, except it probably won't win community support because that was Drew McCoy from Respawn Entertainment was the guy who yeah. had a bit of a go at everybody on, on Reddit. So he probably won't win yeah, that. It... Well, it... in fairness, I think they probably deserve it. That's he was right. And thrown at them, but it's also going to cause a conversation. Yeah. Not saying he wasn't right. I said he was right at the time, but I think, and I think, in fairness, I think Siege is a game that essentially nothing at its lost, and it's still getting supported. Yeah, you know, hundred percent. Like I don't know much too enough about the communities of, of any of these games, apart from Apex Legends, because no, I was I played in it none of them. for a bit. Um... Well, no, technically, I played the tutorial of Apex Legends, I suppose. I played it. It's the game that got Keith in uh, in playing battle royales with us for a bit, and Keith hates battle royales, so and it turns out he's really good at it. Um, 
multiplayer game for outstanding online multiplayer gameplay and design, including co-op and massively multiplayer experiences, irrespective of game genre or platform. Uh, so these are Apex Legends, Borderlands 3, Call of Duty Modern Warfare, Tetris 99, and Tom Clancy's The Division 2. This is probably where Apex wins? Probably. I think Tetris 99 deserves it, but I think Apex will. If it doesn't win action game, it might win both. Um, but I feel like, yeah, like I think this is where Apex... We're, we're probably overthinking the politics of this, because it's not the... It's you know it's a it's mostly just a straight up popularity. Yeah, it's just a bunch of people voting on on stuff, and I'm trying to think like uh, Borderlands three that kind of fizzled quite quickly. Division two, maybe Modern Warfare. I don't think so because I think people are just kind of over Call of Duty at this point. I think that's nominated because it really because it's Call of Duty. It's the best selling game of the year. Um, and Tetris ninety nine for the novelty value. I think might get some some traction uh in this category but yeah i think probably apex stands out more than the rest of them um yeah i don't really have much to say about multiplayer games apex is i think it's fairly straightforward yeah this one's not game direction awarded for outstanding creative vision and innovation in game direction and design and the nominees are Control, Death Stranding, Resident Evil 2, Sekiro Shadows Die Twice, and Outer Wilds. I always get confused by game direction because it's not... These aren't movies? Like where you get a best directing mm-hmm. thing because well, of the direction of a movie? Well, Hideo Kojima says hi. I mean, okay, yeah, sure. Hideo Ko- Again, by Hideo <laughs> Kojima. Yeah, okay, fair enough. Like, But, like, I'm in control. Oh, he's going to win, <laughs> isn't it? It's probably going to win, though. Yeah, that's yeah, exactly that's what right. I was thinking. Now, but as soon as I thought this is about game direction, Kid Yogajim is going to win this. It's awarded for outstanding creative vision and innovation in game direction and design. And it's like... I'm does, s- based on that definition, he doesn't deserve to win. No. But it is that <laughs> thing of, like, Death Stranding is 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 art. It is the art house game. Yeah. Like, the art house movie version. Like, the game version of the art house movie. It's like, he's going to win this. <laughs> Like, regardless of whatever else is here, right? Outer Wilds I, might sneak it because it's very different. But, yeah. Death Stranding's yeah. probably. I got think this I was fit and wonder if Resident Evil 2 should be excluded for a for outstanding creative vision and innovation. I was going to bring game direction design yeah. for a re. You know? Like. I think the implementation of Mr. X is, is fantastic, but fundamentally it's an idea that one or two. Yeah. Like. We've done that. Like that idea has happened before, but like, yeah, yeah innovation is is a good sticking point on that one. Yeah. Where it's like, yeah, was was Resident Evil Two really that innovative? No, yeah, it, it was in nineteen ninety nine. It's a very <laughs> well constructed, put together. Not everything has to be terribly correct. Yeah, but Look I feel like you could come up movies. with. I feel like you could come up with something which had more of a of a unique creative vision and was yeah. more innovative than the Resident Evil Two or even yeah. Sekiro. I would control. I would put Sekiro on the same list. I don't. Control I think is is different because Control has a visual style to it that's that's unique and it's sort of it's very it's sort of ver- singular. It's, it's verging into genres and media or so beyond video games and just weird stuff that you don't really get in video games. Okay. Yeah, you've convinced me. I don't. I don't know if I'm afraid. afraid of, basically, out of these, the one I want to win absolutely deserves to, um, but I don't think it's going to. Because as soon as I, I sort of thought of the rate, the wordy of it, game direct. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm gonna have a... an autonomous, and as soon as you say autonomous in video game, yeah. to man, it's, it's the first thing you think of. You just his face. <laughs> Just appears in in your brain. Like I'll be crossing my fingers for out of wilds in this category, but like I'm I will not be surprised at all if like Death Stranding wins it. Um, best Nintendo. I mean, family game <laughs> for the best game appropriate for family player, irrespective of genre or platform. And the nominees are Luigi's Mansion Three, Rig Fit Adventure, Super Mario Maker Two, Super Smash Brothers Ultimate, and Yoshi's Crafted World. Uh, can I just mention that we all forgot that Mario Maker 2 came out this year? I didn't. It... Well, the Game Awards did. The Game Awards did. 
I mean, the Game Awards forgot a lot about Nintendo, and then I think they just got down their fucking list, and they got into Family Game, and they were like, shit, we haven't put any Nintendo games on our list. I will just stuff them all in here. <laughs> because, yeah. of course, like, the quintessential, like, family time game is fucking Ring Fit Adventure. <laughs> well, yeah, fa- it's for families, it's for parents. It's for parents, right. If a game, like, Games, if a game's for a parent, that doesn't necessarily make it a family game. Like, what's a family? By what's, definition, it does. What's if you're a parent, by definition, you have a. <laughs> All right, but if we're going down this definition route, <laughs> we need to redo this whole podcast. Um, Super Mario, like Super Mario, like look, it was the, it was these or some predatory mobile game. What? Do you- no, like, <laughs> why do we need a family game category? Is it just because like we want we want to put Nintendo games somewhere, like? The only one on this list where I would say this is a game, this the correct family game is Yoshi's Crafted World because like I can see like a parent and a kid playing that game together like on like I haven't played it earlier this year like on the easiest difficulty and just like having a like fun with you as a family. This Super Mario is- Maker Two is not a family game. <laughs> can be if you just like. Yeah, but so could anything. <laughs> I just like to play the Mario games and just have a fun time. So could anything by that definitely. You might as well just point to the fucking game of the year discussion and go, well, these could be family games. Like, just... Yeah, Control is definitely a game you support. Yeah, it's fun for all ages. You sit down on Boxing Day with your, with your kids and your grandmother and say, hey, here's this new weird exploration of God knows what. I mean, number one. It could be, but number two, like I would love to see Grandma trying to play some of the, some Kaizo levels. <laughs> well, you don't play the Kaizo levels with your family. Or strapping on a um, a thing. Does Luigi's Mansion Three have co-op? Yes. I know it has I multiplayer. So. I think someone can play as Luigi. Cool. Then I'll allow that one as well. Super Smash Bros. Ultimate is just a multiplayer brawler. It's like we forgot to put it anywhere else. Let's just put it here. No, it's in Best Fighting Game as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I don't have that one here. We're not going to get into the the def. We're not going to get into nitpicking the definition of fighting games. I've seen so many people do that since. Well, that's in fair. That's a two horse race between. Yeah, since this list came out, like half of the discourse, I feel like is is Smash Bros. really a fighting game? Oh God, this happens every year, every time. It's like, well, yes, yes, moving on. Yes, it is. Stop complaining. <laughs> oh, so it's going to win Best Fan. Huh? Yeah, probably. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, You know what? Uh, yeah. I'll, I'll throw my... Like, I'll say an outside chance. I'll on Ring Fit Adventure. Because everyone who's played it, or I've seen who's played it, really likes it. Um, I think Game Mars, though, will pick Smash Bros. Oh, yeah. But it is just the outlets and stuff. It, it sort of that it appeals to the audience. Do you think? I wonder if there'll be another character that they get at the Game Awards. Yeah, because they said they were doing a, a, another pack. Like, uh, like there's the five fighters, and we've got four, right? Yeah. And then we'll <laughs> they get did that one. just as they just as they announced Terry Watts' face because everyone, well, everyone was like, I "You." About, I don't know about everyone, but certainly <laughs> I was like, even I rolled my eyes a bit at that one. I think it's the first Smash character where I actually didn't. That's like, well, apart from like Fire Emblem, I suppose. Yeah, but it's like, like you think about the reveals, like Joker and um, Banjo, and then it's like Terry. And it's like, no, oh, that wasn't as fun. No. Like, no. <laughs> um, okay, so we got two left, and then we can wrap this podcast up. Performance awarded to an individual for voice over acting, motion, and or performance capture. And the nominees for this category are Ashley Birch for uh, Pavati Holcomb in The Outer Worlds, Courtney Hart for Jesse Faden in Control, Laura Bailey for Kate Diaz in Gears 5, Mads Mikkelsen as Cliff in Death Stranding, Matthew Peretta as Dr. Casper Darling in Control, and Norman Reedus as Sam Porter Bridges, that name, <laughs> Sam Porter Bridges in Death Stranding. That name kills me every time. Um... Are you suggesting that the guy who named a character Decoy Octopus has a name? I mean, Die Hard Man was in was in Death Stranding. I'm gonna rest my case. Um, these are all really solid choices. Like, yes, but, yes, but. I don't want Mads Mikkelsen 
just to win because I think it cheapens the whole thing to have people who are primarily no aren't game screen actors. actors come in and take an award for deserving voice actors. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm not saying Laura Bailey necessarily deserves it for this particular performance because I can't judge, but she deserves a fucking lifetime and she something else. Well, funnily enough, like. Yeah. I mean, if I was having, if I, someone said, someone said to me, like, Amy, these are the six performances we've nominated. I want you to rank them from one to six. I would go, okay. And to be fair, Lance Mickelson and Norm Reed just did a great job in Death Stranding, but I'd put them at five and six. Do they do the mocap? They did, yes. Very okay. much so, yes. Um, okay. And like, I was just thinking, that must have been like, listen. Their performance really does come through in the okay, in the good. in the games, like, and they are good performances. But I mean, all of the other ones are just are like I prefer, prefer, yeah, like Ashley Birch, Pavati, Pavati is is like up until November fifteenth when I met a certain little droid buddy of mine. Pavati was probably my favorite like companion character in a, in in a game like in twenty nineteen. <laughs> Um, and that includes Fire Emblem, which, like, you know, before I played Outer Worlds, I was like, there, there are going to be no better characters than Raphael and Bernadette. Well, there and fairness, the characters are just kind of an, not even anime stereotype. Just yeah, Fire that's Emblem true. But so. Pavati is is fantastic, and Ashley Birch does such a good job. And then you've got Courtney Hope as Jesse, who, who anchors the entirety of that game, knocks it out of the park. That's- um, and the Doctor, Doctor uh, Darling, yeah, from Control. Like all I remember about Doctor Darling is that one room. Spoilers for Control. For that one room you walk yeah, into, yeah, yeah, you haven't yeah, finished yeah. it. Okay, never mind. <laughs> I thought you. I, I was like, oh, you finished it. We can talk about. No, no I haven't no, finished okay. it. Well, there's one thing near the end that I'll always is burned into my memory. Like so, I, but yeah, like maybe not. I would probably wouldn't give it to him. For me, it is Laura Bailey, Kate Diaz, like. Absolutely, like she. Like, I mean, I, I, I think Court. Oh, oh, based on individual performance, I'm gonna give it to Courtney Hope. That's fair, but because again, these are all top tier, like amazing performances. Yeah, I mean, honestly, in fairness, I would, I would shower Ashley Bailey with all the awards if, if I could. I would have them show up at the fucking Oscars, but uh, you know, one day they're not. <laughs> Fuck the Oscars. Who remembers that moment of Game Awards history? Um, but on the other hand, I think they've probably already a bunch of awards. Yeah, but yeah, it's like... I just, I just think it's a... I think it's a bad image to have Madden come on stage and collect in, in video games. In an industry that really doesn't, I think, give the recognition, remuneration it should yes. to its its voice acting talent. Definitely. And on top of which, I also don't think he's going to so... I hope so. It's like, can you imagine Mads Mikkelsen sitting in the audience next to Ashley Bird? Well, this is the thing. It's like, like you always, it still happens. Like, I can't believe it still happens in 2019, where it's like, game, you've got people just like, like games publishers and stuff. They're like, they'll get like Death Stranding, where it's like, we've got Norman Reedus in our game. And it's like, okay, whatever. Like, I suppose that's, that's. For me, it's like, I've, yeah. we've got, we've got Laura Bailey in our game. I'm much more excited about that. <laughs> well, 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 yes, but no, I'm so, so But I'm, shit. I'm. It's a video game. Of I'm course, not you've got more of it. Yeah. Um, I suppose we'll know is if it's if it's one of the technical awards. It's sort of like flashes up on screen as just best performance. It will, you know, a professional voice actor in a union. If it's you know they read mm-hmm. out all six of them and Hideo Kojima is probably going to go to North Korea. Hideo Kojima is going to be there. He's going to win something. Yeah. Um. Just he's gonna win something. Just a law of statistics says he's gonna win something. <laughs> but um, the no, I mean like they've they've done a good job of like having like voice like vo- prop like voice actors like get up on stage. I think the performance one has always been a lot that's been a been presented. Um, yeah. I'm trying I'm I'm trying to remember what last year's was because I remember when Nolan North won for Uncharted, he got up and did that speech about. Well, when the, that was when the voice actors like union dispute was a thing. Um, yeah. And then there was the year after, which was the woman who did Hellblade, who oh, never voice acted right. in anything in her life. Yeah. Um, 
Uh, best performance 2018 was Arthur Morgan. Ah, uh, Arthur. Be- beating out Chris Judge's Kratos. You were- I remember I was very angry about that. Yeah. <laughs> no, beating out Chris Judge and uh, the guy who uh, played be- Spider Man. And the last who played Cassandra in Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Yeah, okay, that, yeah, he shouldn't. No, <laughs> no offense to Rod. Uh, this is where democracy, this is where you can see democracy has failed us in that one category because I think the person, and again, great performance by the guy who did Arthur and Red Dead Redemption 2, not knocking it, but I think that was probably the weakest of the nominees. Like, yeah. Chris Judge is great. Us, like, come on, man. Like, but yeah, in in this regard, it's like, Kate Diaz is in, in, in Gears 5. It's like, I never expected Gears 5, I never expected Gears to ever make me feel things. And Gears 5 made me feel things. And Kate... Really? Not even in Gears 2 when Dom finds his wife? Um, I guess. It was a long time ago. Maybe oh, I'm just... Kind of maybe, maybe I just picked up Gears 5 and was just like bought into the internet hype of it's the dude bro shooter. And, but this yeah. time there's a woman. And I was like, oh, okay. And like it just reset my brain because I, I it's been a long time since I played Gears. <laughs> And I was like, I'm feeling things. This is, and then the last act, and then it's like everybody's emoting. What's going on? This isn't like, this isn't what I was expecting. And now, like you've reminded me of Gears too. It's like, wait, no, it's exactly what I should have been expecting because that's what Gears does. Somewhere along the line, my brain malfunctioned <laughs> when I was anticipating Gears Five. But yes, Laura Bailey, hundred percent. Let's do the last one. Score and music. For outstanding music, inclusive of score, original song, and or licensed soundtrack. Um, here we've got Cairns of Hyrule, Death Stranding, Devil May Cry 5, Kingdom Hearts 3, and Sayonara Wild Hearts. I've just realized that's three separate awards just rolled into one. Inclusive of score, original, and or licensed and or soundtrack. Licensed soundtrack. That's how Death Stranding is here. Like Ludwig Forcell did a good job on the score of Death Stranding, but the Death Stranding is here probably because of all the licensed music that plays when you're wandering the the, uh, the plains right. of America. Which, if it's utilized well, is it is as it was in Metal Gear Solid Five. It's is. fair enough. Although I wouldn't have nominated Metal Gear Solid Five for best soundtrack based on the licensed song. It's got a really good soundtrack. So does, so does Death Stranding, in fairness. But yeah. <clears throat> like I can, oh, I. Have the only one of these I've heard is Kane, which I would probably give by default because it's it's remixes of Zelda songs. Kane's of Hyrule um, soundtrack is wonderful. Yeah, Devil May Cry Five. I can I can hear what it's going to be like just based on Devil May Cry. <sighs> Do you know how I think Devil May Cry Five ended up here? Because everybody really liked Devil Trigger and the song. Well, it's the original song. Yeah, no, what, this is what I'm saying, but it's like, I'm gar- like challenge, I challenge anybody who nominated Devil May Cry 5 in this category to name one other song from the soundtrack. <laughs> other than there the theme tune. The one with the guitars that goes... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're not wrong. No, um, I'm sure I'm not. I'm just basing on the soundtrack of Devil May Cry 1. Yeah, probably, yeah. It hasn't, yeah. Yeah, I'm right. I mean, Sayonara Wild Hearts for me is my what I would pick. It's like it's, it might win, maybe, but like the soundtrack in that game. I mean, it's a music rhythm. It's like Cadence of Hyrule. It's a music rhythm action game. So you know the soundtrack has to be on point, otherwise the game's not very yeah. good. But <laughs> like, Kingdom Hearts Three had cheats by having Disney songs. Yeah, it's like that's what I was just thinking. It's like King. It's like. How did Kingdom Hearts 3 get nominated? Like, I'm pretty sure I just had a generic JRPG. No way, it had all the Disney songs in it. <laughs> people keep telling me how great... People keep saying how great the soundtrack is. I don't think the soundtrack to Kingdom Hearts has ever been really any good. It's just, like, boring, generic, orchestral stuff yeah. and Disney songs. And that's cheating. It's got right? frozen you don't in fucking it. Let, you don't, yeah, you don't get to win best score music because you recreated... The, let it go scene by scene that's not fair. Yeah. like i remember when they did gdq some G- uh, sgdq and there was a, a thing they were doing a speed run of kingdom hearts 3 and they had someone perform some of the songs 
like at the show like because there was moments where you have to like they're doing a thing and they're not talking for like five minutes and there's nothing really going on so they pulled someone out to do a performance of the disney songs and he did like three times and that was awesome but yeah it's just like your song you just because your game's got some fucking disney songs in it like it's like come on man Whereas we've got Cadence of Hyrule with its awesome Zelda remixes, Siren or Wild Hearts with its amazing synth pop music, and Devil May Cry 5 with its awesome theme tune, um, <laughs> and Death Stranding with its really depressing fucking electronic indie music. It's just like, it's cool, but I try to listen to it outside of the game once, and I just. Ah, my mood. <laughs> like, it affected my mood so badly. I was like, I'm never doing that again. You can just picture Norman Reedus climbing over, like, Aussie Stone. It's weird because it, like... So it triggers in the game when you're doing a long walk. So, like, if you're going from, like... If you're going quite a distance, like, it'll start playing the song. It tells you what the song is. Like, it all comes up on the screen. And it's really cool. But it, it's, like... It's really, de- like, depressing music. And... Like, like in terms of its mood, and I, like, but in the game, it creates this like almost like it creates a different type of atmosphere than it does when I'm just sitting back listening to it. Like, it's very strange. Like, I never felt down when I was, or like, I don't want to say depressed because you know, but like, I can't think of another word for it right now. Um, sad. Um, like, I never felt sad when I was when it came on in the game, but then when I was like listening to it in my headphones and I was on a bus and I was just like, I feel really gloomy now. <laughs> Like, no. So, like, no. For that reason alone, I was like, no. Okay. But, yeah, sign our wild hearts. I'd be fine with Cadence Viral winning it because that game fucking kicks ass. And does not have enough representation on this Game Awards nominations list. So, okay, yeah, that's all of them that we were going to talk about. Unless you want to talk about esports team of the year. Or... No. Well, I have <laughs> nothing useful to contribute to it. I know, right? It's like. I think San Francisco shocks in there. It's like, yeah, that'll do. Like they won the Overwatch like League. Content creator of the year. It's like, who are these people? They all look. I'm being mean, but I have no idea. I don't know who any of the content creators of the year are. So that's probably why I don't have many subscribers. They're all dude. Sure. Mm. Of course they are. That I feel like I feel like the the esports stuff should be spun off. I feel like that's a different awards ceremony because yeah, it's it'd be like, like having like a sports a award industry. category at like yeah at the Oscars, right? <laughs> like if the Oscars was suddenly like had an awards for like best best sporting moment, yeah. like you know. What I, I guess mean? the 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 problem is if they spun it off, no one. I think it would still get watched quite a bit. I feel like, but it would be a very different thing because it wouldn't have it wouldn't have all of the musical performances and game reveals and stuff that like the game awards has uh, whereas i think it would just be about awards but i feel like i feel like a, an awards show like this probably suits esports a little bit more than it than it does like maybe like just like this is the best action adventure game this is the best action game there's a difference even though we've mixed them all, all the nominees up, we're not going down that road again. That's going to do it, it go, f- Amy. for episode. Let it go, <laughs> let it go. This is going to do it for episode one hundred and eighty-four of the words about Gamescast. Because any time we break into Disney song, that's a good time to stop the podcast. Thank you very much for Thanks joining me, Pat Rick. It's okay. We did we did a whole thing about the Game Awards, which I I wasn't anticipating. We're not going to reshoot the beginning. I've decided. What? Like, I mean, you you covered most of the most of the things that we we're going to talk about, apart from the other four like, news stories. <laughs> Google is talking to a woman of its new gaming. It's, it's a Resident Evil Three remake planned for twenty twenty. Well, no shit. Okay, right, we've covered it. <laughs> That's going to do it for episode one hundred and eighty four <laughs> of the Words of Our Games cast. Thank you very I'm much sorry. for joining me, Parry. <laughs> I'm sorry. It, no, that was good. Bad. It worked. It, we did it. We covered all five topics. Um, yeah, let's get the fuck out of here because I'm hungry. <laughs> Go eat something. Say bye. Bye.